Hello, Church of Sun Valley. My name is Ron Alexander. Uh, I've been attending uh, CSV for about four and a half years. Um, life verses I've had many uh, throughout my life, depending on, uh, you know, sometimes it just depends on where I was and what I was doing uh, at that time. But uh, one that always uh, comforted me uh, that I r like to recall when I was uh, out uh, around, uh, you know, in the, when I was in the Navy around the ship at night uh, was Psalms 23, 4. Uh, it re reminded me that God was always with us and he protects us. And uh, that verse was, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Another thing that uh, I always uh, like to keep in mind was, uh, you know, God's will was go is going to be done. And um, God is in control. Uh, when th times kind of got tough, sometimes, you know, and you kind of question things, you, you uh, knew that God was in control. And also, uh, when you wondered what was going on, like maybe right now, uh, you know, it's God's thoughts and ways are not our thoughts and ways. And those two verses, Matthew six twenty seven is, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Uh, that's one that uh, I'd like, I like to keep in mind sometimes. And then Isaiah 55, 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. I, uh, you know, those two uh, I find uh, very useful whenever, uh, you know, I'm just kind of thinking about what's going on, uh, maybe wondering what's happening, but uh, know that God's in uh, control. The other one uh, then is also, I like uh, is very comforting is that we are secure in our faith in John six thirty nine, where uh, Jesus says, and this is the will of him who sent me that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. So know that God is in control. Know that uh, he has control of the situation that's going on around us right now. And uh, just, uh, you know, be uh, be peaceful. It, uh, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. And so don't worry about it. And, uh, thank you. Hello, my name is Mindy Scott and I've lived in Festival Foothills for 13 years. And I have been at the church at Sun Valley for 13 years. My husband is Daniel Scott and I became a Christian at a very early age, but I do believe at 18 is when I came to understand what it meant to follow the will of God. Daniel has asked us to share a life verse or an important verse. I do not have a life verse, but I do have a uh, what I now call a faith verse. So um, back in 2017, I was working at the school doing PE and had just become very overwhelmed, very tired, and I was told that I'd had a lot of headaches. But yet... I knew that we had a busy summer coming. We had a family friend road trip to Texas in June, youth camp with teenage girls in July, and then I had a mission trip to Brazil in August. So I knew that I couldn't stop, though I wanted to just climb in bed. Right before our trip to Texas, I remember looking at my husband and saying, uh, in utter defeat, all I want is to lay in bed and stay there as I was so very tired. And if you know me, that's not my norm. I like to go, go, go. I like to socialize and be with people, talk, do whatever. But I was just to the point that I didn't want to do anything. So I made it through the family friend trip and it was very fun and worth it. And then I went to youth camp and had a blast. I guess you can't go wrong up in Prescott. And then during our trip to Brazil on Sunday, the mission group, all we all attend the Sunday morning service. And Tony, who is our main contact with Pioneer Missions at the time, was introducing all of us. And then he also shared, to my surprise, that I'd be hosting a women's event that Thursday night. Later on, Daniel shared with me that he did not tell me on purpose because I'd been complaining that I was so tired that he feared I would say no, which I will say this one time, he was right. And so on that following Tuesday, I asked if I could stay back and prepare for what God would like me to share. And during that sweet time, 
God led me to Mark 5, 22 through 36, which has now become one of my most favorite passages in the Bible, and I'm going to read those scriptures to you now. A synagogue leader named Jairus arrived, and seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded with him urgently, My little daughter is near death. Please come and place your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had suffered from bleeding for 12 years. She had borne much agony under the care of many physicians and had spent all she had but to no avail. Instead, her condition had only grown worse. When the woman heard about Jesus, she came up through the crowd behind him and touched his cloak. For she kept saying, If only I touch his garments, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped, and she sensed in her body that she was healed of her affliction. At once Jesus was aware that power had gone out from him. Turning to the crowd, he asked, Who touched my garments? His disciples, his disciples answered, You can see the crowd pressing in on you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? But he kept looking around to see who had done this. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him, trembling in fear, and she told him the whole truth. Daughter, says Jesus, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free of your affliction. While he was still speaking, messengers from the house of Jairus arrived and said, Your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Jesus overheard their conversation and said to Jairus, Do not be afraid, just believe. And he did not, and Jesus did not allow anyone to accompany him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. So when they arrived at the house of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw the commotion, all the people weeping and wailing loudly. And he went inside and asked, Why all this commotion and weeping? This child is not dead but asleep. And they laughed at him. Some of you know that the following October, while out to lunch with a friend, I would have a grand mal seizure, which led us to find a brain tumor in my right frontal lobe. And then in November, they would have brain sur surgery to have it removed to find that it was cancerous and the start of radiation and chemo through August of 2018. This verse was to me, God preparing me before the storm to trust in him and to not be afraid, only to believe. I guess you could say it has become my faith verse. May you be encouraged and trust God's hand each day. We are living in strange days right now, and many are struggling emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually. May we all remember what Jesus told Jairus as it applies to us now. Do not be afraid. Just believe. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shane. I'm Joy. And uh, we've been coming to the church since January of uh, this year. But we actually first came to the church of Sun Valley back in January of 2009 and has since moved back this last January. And my favorite verse, or not really my favorite, but it's definitely a verse that I've used in my life, and that is Galatians 2.20. And the reason that this verse is so important to me is just my life and myself. And when I sit down with the Lord and I think about all the things that the Lord has done in my life through, uh, through the Spirit that, that lives within me, through Christ that lives within me, but yet at the same time, there's so many times in my life where I just don't feel, sometimes I don't even feel like uh, I belong within the Christian faith. And so... He's struggling with that, you know, I've sat down with the Lord and, and uh, been praying, but the Lord kind of gave me this scripture when I was going through scripture years ago. <laughs> Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. This life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. And there's so much to unpack in there, but the one thing about the scripture for me is as you tell off on the scripture, and we know that Christ is the one who has been crucified, but we can restart the story with our lives, how we've been crucified by following Christ, because this, the gospel is both that of the things of good, of mercy and praise, but there's also the suffering part of Christ. And I know I've experienced it in life, and this scripture just kind of tied in that God does understand that at times I do struggle, and that... Uh, for me, but by living by, I have been crucified with Christ. I just start that every day, and it gives me a mindset that uh, to follow in Christ. He died on my behalf. And because of that, it's it, when I focus, it's just so easy for me to really do the things that God would have me do. And so this scripture has been very, very important to me for that reason. Um, my life verse is John 3, 8. 
I learned it when I was a very young Christian in the Living Version, but I will quote it from um, the NIV Version now. And it says, The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear the sound, and you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is everyone born of the Spirit. And when I first memorized the scripture in the Living Version, it ended with, um, you cannot tell on whom he will next bestow this life from heaven. And I love that because as a young Christian, it's kind of like God gave me this verse of like a check set. You don't know what God's going to do. You don't know who, what prayer he's going to answer, who he's going to save, who's he, who he's going to bring salvation to, or what he's going to do in your life. So I just love that from the very beginning of my walk with Christ, um, I had an optimistic verse in that I don't know what God's going to do. We know that he's in control. We know that he can do whatever we would like him to do. But we have to just trust that we're going to make our petitions made well known to him. And that being God, he is going to answer them according to what is his will. So um, I just encourage you all with John 3, 8, that we do not know on whom the Lord will next bestow this life from heaven.